finally for Modric, he was able to at least get that code that he has been waiting for in Chelsea Colors. Welcome here on the show, 360 Sport on Trust TV, um, Adini uh, G. Shafe. We'll take you around the world of sports and the UEFA Champions League is back. And tonight is the night that a lot of uh, fans will be out, out there waiting to see what they are close to be playing in the UEFA Champions League. More of that will be coming on the show. But first of all, let's start from the home scene. And I have with me in the studio, Olawale Peters. Good to have you. Uh, good morning, Adeni. It's mm. my pleasure being here. I don't like this, your smile. Just no, see what I, you have in mind. <laughs> you have smile, something in mind. Yes, of course. You know I have something. That okay. Chelsea, at least, winning against Fulham uh, yesterday was a big one, especially for Modric. Okay, um, I don't think it's a big one. For him? Okay, for Modric, yes, yes it's a big one. I mean, having his or recording his first, uh, first goal. But the match is more like a morale booster for the team. It's what the team really needs. I've even won their last match against Brighton. And if you look at them with 10 4 and before the match, they have superior head to head. They have an advantage over them. They've met about, um, I think, about 35 times between 2001 up to yesterday. Fuam only won twice. Chelsea won 21 times and they drew 12. Actually, I was hoping for a draw because if they are playing a debut, because what they played yesterday was a South, um, South London debut between them, just like what happened between Tottenham and, um, Tottenham and Arsenal, North London debut. What we had yesterday was South London debut. And when you are playing a debut, a lot of things will have happened. So I was expecting probably a draw, but I think it's a very good one for Chelsea team. It's a very good one for Modric. It's a very good one for the team. And don't forget, this same Chelsea team that you people are just laughing at every time, <laughs> every time, every time. They still have the best defensive record in the Premier League as at today. I have to cut you there because if I don't cut you, you will not allow Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go straight to other stories straight before we talk about Chelsea. We talk about Super Eagles. They were playing friendly uh, with two countries, the members of Mozambique and also Saudi Arabia Green Fire Council. That will be a October 13, uh, that's, uh, those matches uh, will be coming up in Portugal. Well, international friendlies, Omero, Iwobi, Osai Samuel, Mofi, back to Super Eagles. Coach Pizero invited players. Let's look at the list of those invited for this particular uh, match. There we have goalkeepers, Francis Uzoho, Adebayo Adele, Oloron Leke Ojo, defenders, Brian Osai Samuel, it's back to the team, Jordan Turuna, uh, Turuna here, there, Ola Aina, Kenneth Omero, Bruno Onyemichi, Semi Ajayi, Calvin Bassi, Jamilu Collins, and you go to the midfield, we have Wilfred Indidi, Rafael Onyedika, Joe Aribo, Oyeka Frank, Alex Iwobi, and Fisayo Dele Bashiru. Uh, that's the first time for him now getting his best debut for Super Eagles. The forwards or strikers have Kelechi Ihiana Cho, Samuel Chukweze, Moses Simon, Ademola Lukman, Osime, Boniface, Taiwa Wuni, and also Tere Mofi back to that team. It will be happening live at Estadio Municipal de Portimao in Portugal, October 13 against Green Falcons of Saudi Arabia. After three days, they will play against Mambas of Mozambique. Okay. Um, I still have issue with this team list. Hmm. Honestly, I will say the truth. What I'm expecting to see is to see a team, I mean the team list of the Super Eagles that will take us to AFCON. We're in October. We just have about two or three months before the competition starts. But if you look at what we have right now, we have how many midfielders? Six midfielders. From these midfielders that we have now, look at all of them. Just tell me one creative midfielder among these six midfielders that we have. Mm. No creative midfielder. No ball-to-ball -ball midfielders are among them. So that is what the team, that is what we are lacking. And we are going with only six midfielders and how many attackers are we going with? We, we are going with eight, eight attackers. And we all know it's a common sense in football that if you don't have a good midfield, you don't have a team because the midfielders, they are the ones that bridge the gap between the, uh, defender, and the, and the, the defender and the striker. They are the propeller that keeps the engine of a team running. So you can't be going for a competition like this and you have only six midfielders. And from these six midfielders, they are all defensive midfielders. No attacking In fact, this time midfielders. around, we have six. If you remember, it's all, it has already been four. Four, 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 four five. Yes. So that is, my, that is my problem. You know, I've said it here on the show, Times Without Number, that what we are lacking here is we are lacking creative midfielders. We still don't have it. Do you want to be playing attackers, attackers? What would the attacker play if the midfielder are not supplying them the, with, the, with the ball? We can't be playing from... What formation do we want to play now? 4-2-4, four, four, like we play against Atomi and Principal, that we use five attackers against them? I think seriously something is wrong with this, our coach. I, we will not talk now until we get to the 
Nations Cup. We'll not be expecting one that to happen. And January from, is so close. Team. It's so close. We have about two or three, three months. And the team that we're supposed to be portraying now, supposed to be the team that we use for the AFCON. By now, they're supposed to be a unit. Know how to place together. <clears throat> you can listen to talk about Austin J.J. Okusha. Because we've not found a replacement for him. When Okusha is holding ball, you know where to put the ball. To look for Samson Siasa, to look for Daniel Amokachi, to look for Rashidi Yakini, to look for... If you are, we want to play a defensive midfielder, and you're looking at Sunday Olise, you know that that midfield has been blocked. She Compact. Loves that. She you're loving Jano too. <clears throat> he played his own role. We don't have that again. We don't have that again. Th this particular player, Rabi Ibrahim. Rabi Ibrahim, when he was playing for the junior uh, Eagles, at, at yeah. least Rabi were already tagging him to be the next JJ coach. But things went south and he went to oblivion. And since then, we've not been able to. Uh, it's a, it, it was having that kind of mold, the way Okocha plays football, so easy. It makes it so easy playing, but it didn't go well. <coughs> okay, you see the reason why it didn't go well with him. And I will, I'll put the blame on the NFF and even maybe some media practitioner also. You see some players, when it comes to national um, playing for Europe or clubs, they don't have that luck of playing in established or good club. Mm. But when it comes to them serving their country, they are doing very, very well. Let me take you back to the days of Brazil, when Brazil was really the Samba, bo mm. Samba boys. Most of their players, we don't know them, we don't see them. They play in their local leagues. They believe in them, but we have a way of demotivating people. The fact that they don't have a good club outside there, when you bring him in, say, Oh, it's unknown to us. Uh, he's playing no. in Tremsin, uh, Slovakia, or there about. So, what we need to do then was to continue to encourage him to give him more playing times. You will see a very good coach. Look at the drug bar that he used to talk about in Chelsea. When drug bar came in, then he wasn't performing optimally, but Mourinho knew what he saw in him, he was using him consistently, and he got to a play. To a time that it became the drug bar that we all saw at Chelsea, even at Cote d'Ivoire. So the same thing is what we're supposed to have done with Rabiu, Ibrahim. I will still have a lot of them in this same country also, but we are not using them. Alex Iwobi, a lot of people will argue with me that he's a creative midfielder. Alex Iwobi is a box-to-box -box midfielder. Not creative. Not a creative midfielder. A creative midfielder doesn't even go... His own job is to just stay before that line. Keep the ball. Keep the ball. It. Distribute the ball. Hold the ball. Put down the pressure. That was what John Mikel Obi was Obi, doing yes, before he went to Chelsea and they turned him to pass me, pass me, pass you. <laughs> he became a defender. Defender. So we don't have that. We don't have that in our team also. When everybody's playing uh, kick and follow, basic football, you need someone to calm the ball down, to calm the number of everybody. Do want to, how many of these players can dribble two, three, four players? None of them. It's kick and follow. Football has gone beyond that. So I think... Uh, Honestly, I don't want to talk about your coach again because yeah, I okay, he's, now, he's my coach now. Me, no, yeah, I'm not my coach because <laughs> he's I never I just, I just hope Zero is watching that. Since you have tagged me, we'll tag, we'll tag we'll me we'll that we'll we'll send the clip to him. Seriously. You will send it to him. Well, Coach Bizero, at least I've been tagged that uh, you are my coach. Hopefully, you, your team will do well against Mozambique, rather Mozambique and also Saudi Arabia. The Falcons, they call them the Falcons of Saudi Arabia. They face Super Eagles on 13th October over there in Portugal. Why three days later, they will face the Mambas of Mozambique in another friendly there. Hopefully, they will get their acts together before the Nations Cup starts proper in Côte d'Ivoire. We need to do well. In fact, a lot of Nigerians are hoping that we can win this particular edition. It is very possible uh, that uh, we can win this if everything goes well concerning Team Nigeria, the Super Eagles there. Right now, let me move away from Super Eagles story. Let's come back home and talk about MPFL, a new team in the league uh, there. That's uh, Sporting Lagos. They were able to win their first ever MPFL victory. They beat Gombe United in Lagos. And it was a good one for them. Sweet victory for Sporting Lagos. A lot of people, because of the name of that team, Sporting. <laughs> a lot of people actually follow them. Yeah, Sporting Lagos. And I think a very good one for them. Um, I, I, I see them going further. I, I see them um, becoming the next um, Bendel insurance also. I see them, they came prepared. And we saw that also because and what keeps them working, if you watch their qualification back to the Premier League also, you know that it's something that they deserve for a very, very, very long time. But luck is not really on their own side. So we need their first match at home. And if you, see, if you see the crowd also that came out to cheer them, in fact, it's more like uh, the Manchester United noisy neighbor mm. during the match also. So I think it's a very good one for them. Then their goalkeeper also, if you don't forget to do what? To play the goalkeeper because even not for the effort of the goalkeeper because most of the matches, you see that you want a match 
and everybody is celebrating the goal scorer. But what about the goalkeeper? Seriously, uh, uh, like, like this thing you are just mentioning right now, there was an argument and someone was saying, well, if not for Cannavaro, who was able to break that uh, World Footballer of the oh, Year? Yeah. No, it has always been for the strikers and midfielders. Nobody remember the defenders, nobody remember the goalkeeper. And it's always very painful because you look at some classy goalkeepers, you think about uh, them, <clears throat> Cassiers, you look at what they Buffon. did. Buffon. See, Buffon. You look at this kind of goalkeeper, you are like, wow, they deserve to even get World Footballer of the Year like three times, four times, because of what they did for their country and also for their clubs, but it never happened. <clears throat> yeah, it never happened because we're not really paying attention to it, sincerely. Look at Iker Casillas also, even though because of that ball that he saved during the World Cup, mm. that he stretched himself to, it would have been another thing entirely. So the same thing happened here also. If the goalkeeper didn't make, he made about seven saves during the match also, but nobody's applauding the goalkeeper. Nobody even made mention of the goalkeeper. I think it is high time. If you are looking at the people that scored the goal, let's look at the people that defend the goal, the, the goal from the opponent from coming in. Because if not, if you score two goals, I, I concede four goals. Ask Manchester United their problem today. The third is another. Seven matches, he has considered seven, uh, 11 goals. Seven matches, 11 goals in Premier League alone. If you go to Europe, eight matches, he has considered 15 goals. So that is something that it needs to be worried about. That is something that a team needs to be worried about. So that's what we are talking about. If you are scoring goals and your keeper turns to baskets, it will have an effect on your team. Well, while well, like, vets on your team, they are coming from La Lepita Sporting Lagos. And in first ever MPFL victory, this is the first time they are playing the MPFL mm -hmm. and they were able to do it in a good way. 2 0. <coughs> Sporting Lagos, Cost of Clement, and also Rizzo. <coughs> getting those goals there. And right now they are celebrating. Let's see what they will do against uh, Aqua United. By the time they face them in their second match of the MPFL, it's a battle of fire for that team, welcoming them to MPFL. Well, just giving you an update there. Right now, let's talk about uh, games that were played also yesterday. Before we go to Ever Champions, let's talk about Monday Resort. A big one for Chelsea. They were able to win away, well, at Craven Court, say they are 2-0. Good one for Chelsea. Modric has really waited for a very long time trying to get those goals. But right now, at least, he has opened the account. And let's see, maybe he continue to build on it. Let's focus on Chelsea first. Fulham Chelsea, what a match. Good one for Chelsea there. Yeah, uh, a good one for Chelsea, a good one for Modric also, a good one for the team also. That's the truth. You know, they are still a team in transition. The fact that they won two matches on a row doesn't mean that they've arrived. <clears throat> they haven't arrived. They still have a lot, a lot to do. Defensively, they are doing very well. Like I was saying um, earlier on before you got jealous and you said that you actually hold on. They have the best um, they have the best defensive record so far this season. From the seven matches that have been played, they've considered only six goals. It's only Arsenal team that have done that also. So that means defensively, they don't have that problem. Mm. But the problem is in front of goals. They don't have sharp strikers. It's like everybody is eager. Like um, Jackson, for example, I see him as someone with it's a student with good handwriting, but it's always failing an exam. Exams. We are only seeing the effort. We are not seeing the result. Nobody counts effort at the end of the day. It's result that we look out for. Mm -hmm. I think all of them needs to calm down, play their game, and do very well in front of goals. So defensively, I don't think they have a problem. The midfield also, they are not doing very bad in the midfield. That's the truth. So I think it's a very good one for them. And playing away from home, it's a good one for them. Playing a debut match is a good one for them. <clears throat> but it is not something that they should start uh, making noise that, oh, we've arrived, we've won two out of two. No, they still have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to do. <coughs> and scoring two goals in 74 seconds, it shows, it shows that you, you, they are really pressing for that win. And they did something yesterday that I love so much. They play more of possessive-based football. So that was why they are able to confuse the, uh, the, the defender of the forearm to commit the two errors that led to, to the those goals. goals. So that's what you do when you play possessive based football. You start, you start attacking from the goal post of your opponent. You don't give them the chance. Immediately the keeper is distributing the ball, you go out there once you have three strikers. So you go out there, there's no how they may make that mistake. They commit that blunder and you utilize that. And that really, really paved way for them. So the same way I, I was happy for Modric, Kai Havertz also, I was happy for him over the weekend also for scoring that goal. And that is what they call leadership. Mm. That's what they call leadership. That was what Riga did. After securing the penalty, he spoke to Gabriel Jesus and he handed the ball over to him and played the ball. You can see the way all the team members went. And is that and, will inspire him? 
to inspire him. So that is what is needed in a team. A lot of people have argued before that. Why would they give Odegaard the captainship band? What he did over the weekend shows, sincerely it, it shows that leader. he is a leader. It's not about age. If you're talking about maturity, it's not about age. You can be 70 years older, but you don't have anything up there. But you can be 14, 15 years, 16 years you're old. Smart to you're handle you're people. smart to handle people, know how to motivate People, I think a very good one for Modric and for Arsenal fan also, I think a very good one for Harvard. Okay, I know you're going to mention Arsenal now, but at least to some extent, uh, <laughs> let's celebrate ourselves. I celebrate Chelsea for yesterday <laughs> and also uh, for the fact that you celebrate Arsenal. We we'll make it 1-1 one -one there. <laughs> now, quickly, let's just run through. Let me look at, uh, let's look at the table right now. How is standing uh, after that match between Chelsea and uh, uh, winning away against uh, Fulham. Good one, Chelsea, they've moved to 11 position right now, at least uh, jumping away from 14 uh, straight up to 11. Good one for them. After playing seven matches, they have eight points. And you look at Fulham, they are now 13th on the log, playing seven with eight points there. Well, good one right now for Eli Haaland, still topping with uh, eight goals, followed by Hume Song of Tottenham Sport, Jarrod Bowen, Alexander Isak of Newcastle, and Brian Belmo uh, actually been there doing well among the top scorers for assist. Jim Madison, Kiran uh, Tibria, Mo Salah, Pedro Neto, and also have uh, James Ward Prowse there. Just to give you how it is right now in the Premier League after match day seven, though the match will be coming up today between Luton and Burnley there. Right now, let's go straight to Italy and say they are still going back to that result. Some games were played yesterday also, and we'll also look at how the table is. Oh, quickly, Italian and are right now, the way the table is, Inter mm -hmm. still topping, AC Milan are second. After those games were played, Atalanta and Lecce are standing sixth and seventh. Fiorentina won their game 3-0, and that has given them to move straight to fifth position, 14 points from seven matches. Uh, I shall give uh, kudos to them for what they've done. Bologna, they're standing eight with 10 points from seven matches for Shinone. And you have Torino in that pecking order. Flipping it to the back of the side of the table now from 11 to 20. Sassuolo, Monza, AS Roma. What's happening to Mourinho and his team? This is the worst start so far, according to him. I love the fact that he admits and he's owning it there. You know, Verona, Lazio, Udinese, Salanitana, Empoli, and Cagliari in that pecking order. Roma, Lazio, 13, 16. Yeah, and um, the, the league is about taking shape. And um, like Murillo admitted also when he lost the last match, that this is the uh, worst season that he has had so far since he started coaching. So I'm sure they're going to discover themselves, but it will be very difficult for them to catch up with the likes of Inter Milan, AC Milan, Juventus, and Napoli, who are taking the first to fourth position, 14 to 18 points, and they are having 8 points. Other teams will not be sleeping. So that is why it's good for you to start very good and very early, so that you can end well. At least if you didn't even make the Euro, I mean the Champions League, you can go to Europe, you can get the Conference League. But that top four, with the way Roma started, I think it is totally off them. The Florentina, I think they are trying to consolidate from where they finished last season. They finished last season sixth, uh, seventh position, but this season, currently now, they are joint fourth position together with Juventus with 14, 14 points. I think it's a very good one for them. But Salernitana, that team, I don't really know what is wrong with them. When they are starting the league, they look as if they are going to be relegated from the beginning of the season. But when it gets to the middle of the league, they, pick up. they just pick up. and just. I think their own is just to survive. That's why they are still there now, 17 mm -hmm. currently now. So I think it's a very good one we are seeing in Serie A. It's not about Inter and AC now. We saw the likes of Napoli, Juventus, and even Florentina coming in to, I mean, to muzzle power with them. A good one out there talking about Italian City. Yeah, just to give you up there, how the table they stand after match day seven now. Let's go to the big one for tonight. We have a Champions League is up and matches will be played. We look at those fixtures in Group A and B. Let's look at those fixtures quickly. Matches coming up. FC Copenhagen of Denmark will be playing against Bayern Munich. And the big one there, Manchester United against Galatasaray. Well, Bayern Copenhagen. Okay, um, I don't see much problem from Bayern winning tonight's match and looking at their performance, their pedigree and uh, the history they have in the Champions League. So I don't think it's going to be a, a difficult one, but it will be a tough one mm. for them. So it's something that I see them winning tonight convincingly. The best they can, uh, Copian can get from them will be a draw. So when we come to our... To the second match. Manchester United. Yes, that's the as they call them the noisy, the noisy <laughs> neighbor. The no, the <laughs> and I hope tonight will not make it a trick loss for them, because the last two matches they've lost, and there's serious pressure on them right now to win. And I'll say this, to be sincere and to be honest with you, the Manchester United, they have a team, they have a coach, 
but the coach they have was overhyped. Mm. They have an average coach, but they thought they have the best coach. So he needs to learn how to manage his team. That is the problem I think they are having in Manchester United right now. The crop of players they have currently right now, take it or leave it, they can still do better than what they are doing. Yesterday I saw a post from uh, Marcus Rashford telling Sancho to apologise and he's insisting he's not going to apologise. How will a situation get to, to that, that level? It shouldn't get to that level. There should be a way you manage your situation. You want to get the result from this player. That's what we normally tell a lot of leaders, a lot of managers, that whatever you think you are achieving, you are not achieving it alone. If you are taking the credit, you are taking the glory, it is, not, it is the uh, submission of what the players, the keepers, the assistant coach, what everybody have done that made you to be successful. That is what we are seeing right now. Now, does it mean, because I remember when Ronaldo's interview actually came up, a lot of people attacked him that he was trying to let out a lot of things and all that. And uh, we saw how between him, how the relationship broke down between him and Eric Ten Hag. Now, Sancho, you know, if it had happened once, now is Sancho, it has happened to even another player. And does it mean Eric Ten Hag uh, to some extent too? Because people are saying he should apologize. I'm talking about Sancho. He's yeah. saying no, he would never do that. And that shows that the player is holding on to something. How do you see this particular scenario? Okay, and um, before Eric Hag came to Manchester United, as he managed a player, the okay. caliber of player that is managing currently now in Manchester United, as him being at the spotlight of managing a club like Manchester United, take it or leave it, Man United is one of the greatest and the best club in the world. You can't take that away from them. As he managed a club like that before, that understand the culture, the tradition of how to deal with the players, to work with the management, with the supporters to achieve a goal. Mm. It does not. So the, 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 my own point is, I'll put the blame on him. So their match tonight, it is um, not like a redemption match for them, that they need to win. But they need to watch out for this lad, Zaha, Moro Ikari, <laughs> for yeah. Galatasaray. Yes, yeah, they have to watch out for him, but they're not playing with, with, an, with an individual, they're playing with a team. Mm. So I'm... Um, I'm one of those who believe that you don't concentrate when you are playing with a team or a particular player. When Messi was at his peak, you don't concentrate on Messi. You concentrate on those people that will give Messi the ball. If the Messi didn't get the ball, if you can mark out the likes of uh, Xavi, Iniesta, what would Messi do? Mm. You'd be running around looking for the ball. So that's why when you're playing, you play like a team. You don't play like an individual. So yeah, it's going to make an impact. He's a good player to watch out for. Maybe they can pair uh, Adi Maguire with him. Jokes apart. Eric Maguire, it's very good when it's come to man to man. To man, mark someone. Mark, mark man, this, okay, this is your player. Don't let him go. Maguire will do that dirty job. But it's not a player that will be running like square play. When you have a square play or you have a round tripping strikers, it will be a problem for the likes of Eric Maguire. But man, mark, take it or leave it, Maguire will deliver that job. So I think Man United, they really need this match to uplift themselves. If not, I think it will not be a good one. And the pressure on the return also will increase more than this. Talking about UEFA Champions League there, Manchester United against Galatasaray tonight. The big one there, can they hold it or will they fall? Well, let's wait and see what happens. Oh, Trafford there. Let's look at Group B of the UEFA Champions League. Matches will also be coming up. Lons against Arsenal. A big one there for Arsenal. Gunners are going away to France. PSV and the at home in the Netherlands. Against Sevilla, the king of Europe, are now playing in the UEFA Champions League. What a big one there. Yeah, a very good one. And I said here on, on the show earlier that this season, since Chelsea is not playing in the Champions League, as nice my team. <laughs> in the Champions League. Um, because they are the only uh, club from the London, London, representing the Londoners in Champions League. And so far, so good. I think they've done very well. So tonight, I see them winning. To be honest That's with Arsenal, you. right? The Arsenal, I see them winning. And if you look at the Arsenal team, sincerely, they have a very, 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 very good team right now. The only problem that I'm always scared of them is the formation and the selection of Mikel Arteta at time. Because it will just pull out a selection that you like. What's wrong with this man? I think he learned that from Pep Guardiola because Guardiola at times will bring out information that will be asking himself, what is wrong with this man now? Why are you doing this? <clears throat> if he didn't do that, I think Asta will go far. So tonight's match is not, uh, it's not a match that you should get worried about. It's a match that he needs to win, giving them six points. And winning this, their next match will be at home at Emirates also. They win it, making nine points. So that means they can take that pressure of the Champions League qualification away from themselves. If you have secured nine points, 
in Champions League, take it or leave it, they are qualified to the round of 16. Nine points is what, what you need, especially in the group that they had. They're not in the group of death. <clears throat> so nine points is okay for them. Give other players the opportunity because they are playing in six competition. So that players can be able to do the same thing. So I say that happening tonight. Then PSV Sevilla. and Sevilla. Yeah, Sevilla, they're the king of uh, Europa. Europa, but this is Champions League. This is the game the of boys. the champion of the big boy. So it's going to be an uh, interesting one. If you look at Sevilla last five matches at home, they're not really doing that very, very, very well. Maybe they can discover themselves tonight, but, but PSV also, they are not a team that you can just do what you can just take away. Looking at what happened between them and Arsenal during their first first match. So I think it's a match for them to also win. Probably a draw may be okay for the two teams. Just looking at those games there, a big one, PSV Sevilla, a draw coming from Olali Peter and for Arsenal going away to Lawrence. Let's see what happened over there in France. Just to let you have a feel of those matches coming up tonight, you have a Champions League and also we look at the last story on the, on the uh, show. We talk about Falcon I Star. That's Florence Sebastian right now in France. Florence Sebastian said to join a French club, start the Reims there. She's already in France and she'll be conducting a medical, a good one for the lady from Bielsa Queens. And right now she has been at least uh, given the opportunity to move away from Nigerian League to uh, Europe. Yeah, a very good one for, for her, and I see her... 18 year old. Sorry? 18, she's 18. That's, yes, that's what they said. That's what they said. <laughs> they said she's, she's 18. 18. <laughs> that's what oh they said. Goodness. 18 is 18. <laughs> yes, 18 is 18. We can even see from the look she's of her face. She's 18. She's 18 years old. And she's really 18 years old. So I think it's a very good one for her, and the best way to start your career at that younger age is to start in Europe. So that means we are building the next generation of super falcons. A very good one for her. A good one for her, for Florence Sebastian moving to France. That would be another a good one for her to at least do well when it comes to playing for Nigeria and also her <coughs> club career. We've given you all the update in the world of football and also different sport here on the show, 360 Sport on Trust TV. Olari Peters, thanks so much for coming. Um, thank you so much, Adeni, for having me. It's my pleasure talking sport on 360 Sport on Trust TV with you. Maybe you should just be a commentator. <laughs> <laughs> a good one there. I'm Adeni. Sport is always business. And fitness. Thanks for watching.